Free sounds are getting amazing. There are so many big name companies making fantastic sounds that you can download and use for free in free doors and never pay a cent. Apart from maybe electricity and snacks. <laughs> Where did you even get these? But there are some downsides to using free samples all the time. They can get kind of boring, or you just reach for a sound that you don't have for a line you are dying to write. They can also be something that a lot of people use, because, like, obviously. But you can dress them up and make them interesting and unique with just three simple sound design techniques that I want to share today. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. Investing in software is expensive and if you're anything like me, a long-term lifelong goal and obsession. Sorry to my wife. Nah, no, who am I kidding? She's actually pretty excited about it. <laughs> but the paywall you're experiencing when you're looking at these big, fancy, expensive libraries is kind of a bitter pill to swallow and maybe something that simply isn't an option for you right now. That makes the free sounds game pretty damn enticing and can make starting your musical journey a lot more accessible. But there are some downsides as we've already mentioned. Same sounds used by a lot of people that you get bored of eventually. Well, you can breathe life back into your sample library with three very simple sound design techniques that help bring more excitement to your tracks. Gives you a whole new exciting sound palette to work with. I'm going to show you how I use these tips in a short clip for a heaviosity competition recently. In that competition, I had to limit myself to just their foundations, free instruments, and one other sample library, which I chose to be the Action Strikes library that's included in Native Instruments Complete. This ended up being an incredibly creative restriction that allowed me to explore the world of sound design a little bit more and it ended up doubling what I could work with. And that was simply by thinking like a sound designer. So let's check out the first tip and don't forget to stick around because there is a bonus little tidbit at the end. Okay, so the first trick is pretty straightforward and that is to use audio effects to change up what you're doing. We often use audio effects when we're mixing, but we can actually use them in the sound design stage when we're composing the music. Effects plugins aren't just for mixing and making things sound good, they could actually be for completely changing the sound entirely to a completely different tone, completely different character. One place that I used this trick was for my second motif, coming out of the first scene of the clip. I had at that point for my first motif used the piano quite a bit and used the nylon string sound quite a bit from Heaviosity's free foundations library and I wanted to create a melody that was a little bit different from the first texture but not quite the full strings that I wanted to save up for another motif later on down the track. So I needed to change and create something new because I was a bit limited as to what plugin I could use. I really only had the piano and the nylon guitar to work with but through a few effects you can get a bit of a different tone or a drastically different tone. For the piano melody I used a little bit of EQ and saturation just emphasizing a little bit of a brighter sound when the piano was sounding a little bit darker initially when it was sampled and a little bit more grit behind it. And then to throw it in a completely different space I used some Valhalla delay and some Valhalla vintage verb. I really liked the delay, it had a really cool texture to it and fed straight into the reverb it gave it this wonderful wash. So a relatively simple change, but all I'm doing is putting it into a new space, a new sort of sonic character based on these reverbs and ripply type effects. These are well-known effects, delay, reverb, saturation, but they're used in this case to give a sense of space, depth, and character, but they can be used to completely change the sound as well. And that was the case with the nylon guitar patch that goes along with this, a completely different aim to my sound design. I desperately wanted to grab one of my guitars, plug it in, and create this awesome lead line over the top of the piano, but it just wasn't an option as part of the requirements of this competition. So then I thought, well, why not try and make a lead guitar out of a nylon string? Kind of a crazy idea, but with a bit of sound design, I got a, a something a little bit close. So my aim was to double this piano melody with a sense of spacious, distorted guitar goodness. But all I had to work with was this initial nylon string sample. which doesn't quite give that kind of lead guitar sound. So the first thing I did was add some distortion and that really changed things. But it was lacking that punch. So I wanted to add a little bit of compression to bring up the sustain of the sound a little bit. Enter the supercharger. We're just getting a little bit more from the notes now. Then I wanted to give it the atmosphere and space that I was looking for. Three plugins helping me here, some chorus, some diffusion delay, and some regular delay to give me this sound. Ooh. 
which by itself isn't too great, but paired with the piano and the rest of the score, it really adds something a little bit different. So with a few simple effects, you can really change the sound into something a little bit different. And I haven't really pushed the boat that far here. You could go drastically different and really create something interesting. And you don't even need expensive plugins for this. Stock plugins will work, free plugins will work. This is an easy win for sound design. Now the next trick leads on from this a little bit. You can use effects to change the sound, but then you can actually commit that to audio, print it down or bounce it down and use that like it's an audio sample. Start manipulating it. I use it in a really simple way just for some risers because I didn't have any risers or transitional elements available to me in these libraries. So I created my own. Over here at the end, I actually bounced out a number of different sounds directly from the library. So there's a piano sound here. That had a really cool siren-y type texture. And I thought that could be really interesting in one of the drop sections. I added some granular processing, which gave it this little bit of a groove to it. I continued to muck about with it, put a lot more effects on it and that sort of thing. And then I took it in here and printed it down to audio and created that effect. And that works quite well in the piece. I also did it for this nylon riser. All I did is record a sound from the nylon string pad texture. I then time stretched it so it made it even longer and rise slower, faded it in and out, added a bunch of effects, which I also automated some of the gain on the radiator and the filter frequency and ended up with this sound. Really simple elements here, but you can see how it can just be pushed even further. An absolute classic, of course, is to reverse a sound and put a little bit of reverb on there to, to make it sound glossy. So I have this very simple melody to begin with. Those two particular notes at the top, I wanted to dress them up a little bit and have a little bit of a blend into the next section where that piano and nylon string guitar come in. So I played some sounds above, but then I also printed some sounds down to audio, reversed them, and even put in a little bit of a reversed piano riser here, and that turned it into this. gives it this subtle sense of space that just wouldn't have been there with the original samples and might not be there in someone else's song. This track didn't really call for any crazy sound design stuff, but you can see how these simple tricks could be pushed way more to the limit. And this second trick helps you kind of think about the source a little bit differently. You're no longer thinking about playable MIDI notes. You're actually thinking about audio. You can stretch, pull, reverse. You can do a lot of different things with audio and you think about it a little bit differently. Now let's flip that for our third one and talk about sending something back back into a playable instrument that you can play with MIDI. While you definitely can't release these sounds, you can make your own mini sample instruments inside the session from stuff that you've bounced down to the audio. For example, I created a stack of three different octaves from the string sample and put them together into a single sample. That way I could play it like an actual instrument because I just simply drag it into a quick sampler. So this weird kind of warpy texture that I created with the first two tricks, I then took this sound into a quick sampler so that we could play it back. If I wanted to create a quick sampler from this sample, for instance, which is just this one here, that was my processed and reworked sound that I created. I could then just click and drag this over to the quick sampler, drop it down, make sure that my root key is set to the same key that I played. That way your library is actually in tune. And you can adjust the sample, add fade ins or fade outs, and then just simply play it with your keyboard. A bit chaotic and a bit unusual, but that makes for an interest, something that you could add. Now this sound in particular is a bit chaotic, but I was able to use it as a little bit of a chime as we moved into one new section. Looking over here at the sparkle, I added on a bunch more effects, some stereo spreading with a micro shift, a little bit of modulation with the Valhalla space modulator, some delay and some reverb, which of course is classic. And that all gave me this sound. 
such a simple thing, but that sound was not available in any way in any of the libraries. And I was able to create this chord and this quick stab or texture or sparkle as I called it very quickly with a quick sampler. Now you have a totally unique instrument that is unheard of in any other track that you've created and you can use again. Now, as a little bit of a bonus, jump down to the description below for a link to a website that actually hosts a huge list of these free plugins and free virtual instruments. It's not just sounds, but it's also plugins as well. So you can use them to create more interesting sounds out of the free libraries. They're all great at providing something new, a new tool that you can use in your music. Now, I didn't write the article, so I certainly can't say it'll always be there, but I do hope they keep updating this list. And if you do a quick Google search, you'll come across many other lists like this one. So it gives you a ton of free sounds to choose from or just download them all. So I hope these three tips are going to be very useful to you in the studio, helping you to shape classic sounds into something new. If you enjoyed hearing me talk about songwriting tips, why not comment that below and subscribe for some more fun in the future. So happy music making everyone and I will catch you in the next one.